Hi, welcome to another Greenlee Live. Um, I'm Katie. And I'm Brian. And we'll get started in just a few seconds here. I'm going to give some time for people to join. All right, so thanks for joining today. Um, this is another Q&A session where we're going to be covering Greenlee vending products. So um, we're going to give away some Greenlee Yetis and stickers, so make sure you, you comment your questions and we'll, we'll answer your questions for you. So we had a post earlier this week asking if there were any uh, questions on bending, and one of the first questions we got in was asking if we can bend three quarter inch on the 855GX. So I'm going to confirm that with you. Yes, uh, we can do that, but it needs to be three quarter inch rigid. The way it's done on the 855 is the one inch groove is designed to actually accept the three quarter inch uh, rigid conduit. And also in the Intella vendor, there's also programming available so that you can program your bends on three quarter also. Another question that we had come in was asking what we have for PVC. Well, we have a couple things for PVC. If we're talking about PVC coated rigid conduit, we do have special PVC shoes for uh, the, our, the electric vendors. And then we also do have um, PVC heaters, like on the floor back here, um, that, that heat all the way up to six inch um, PVC pipe. We also have blankets as well, heating blankets uh, for smaller diameter PVC pipe. All right. Another question that came in, can you bend four inch stainless steel conduit? <laughs> uh, with the 881, you can bend two and a half inch and three inch stainless steel rigid conduit. All right, if you get wrinkles bending EMT, how can you get rid of that? Well, if you get wrinkles in your conduit, one, we have to make sure you're getting a good quality uh, US made conduit. Um, wrinkles can be eliminated or removed being uh, with the squeeze adjustment that's found on an 855 or the 854 or the 555 platforms. So, um, what so what vendors have squeeze adjustment? 854s and 855s. My 855 is here. I also have it on the 555s and even on the 881, the follow bar is the squeeze adjustment also. And you need to see that. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Can you okay. show us that? At that point, we can take and give this a little bit of a spin. This happens to be the back of my 855, which 855, 854 is built on the same platform. You're going to notice there's a nice detail on the back of the vendor. Tells you how to adjust the squeeze. There's a round plate here with multiple holes in it. And as you notice, if I turn the plate counterclockwise, I decrease the squeeze. If I turn it clockwise, I increase the squeeze. Two simple tools that I know most everybody should have is a simple nut driver to take the quarter 20 fastener out of that plate. Once that comes out, we can then take a simple number one Phillips. If I need to increase it, I'm going to take a step back. You will then turn that plate a little bit till you get that to fall back into the threaded blind hole. You can then take that quarter 20 bolt, stick it back in, and tighten it back up. Now the frequency of needing to do this is not something you have to do on a regular basis. What it boils down to is conduit quality is what's going to define how often or when you need to adjust the squeeze. All right, and another uh, question that just came in in the chat is, why do some people flip their bend, their 855 over for bends? Uh, meaning 855 in the tabletop mode? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you're making multiple bends, say a three bend or a four bend saddle, depending on the height of those bends, you may need to have more space to complete the bend. What we're talking about is the distance from the bending moment to the floor. If I need more space, the frame of the unit is designed 
so that I can rotate this down into the tabletop mode, and now I can use the space of the room to make those multiple bends, and I don't have to worry about the conduit hitting the floor. You can also do something similar with the 555 series benders. Um, it doesn't rotate like that necessarily, but it can actually lay down to, to kind of represent the same thing in a tabletop mode like that. All right, a, another question that came in. Um, what is the largest size conduit you can bend with hydraulic benders? So for hydraulic benders, um, you can bend up to five inch EMT or excuse me, rigid conduit. <laughs> and we would have to then say it also is a segment bend only. Correct. And then um, another question that came in, does BendWorks only work with the 855GX? So the 855GX is the only vendor that accepts the BendWorks CSV files. However, you can use um, all the other Greenlee vendors programmed into BendWorks and then you can actually use the mobile app that goes along with Benworks called Benworks Go. And it has all the bend instructions laid out for you with our other vendors. You can follow along with that um, for, for Benworks files. All right, and what is the largest hand bender you have? The largest hand bender we have bends inch and a quarter EMT conduit, as you can see here. Uh, we offer hand benders for half inch through inch and a quarter. All right. And how often do you need to zero out your bender? Whenever you need to zero out the bender, it's because you've either taken the shoe off to go to either PVC coated, which is our black shoes, or if on the A54, you're gonna be using the shotgun shoe or the PVC. It's always good to one, when you change shoes, zero out the bender. Um, if somebody doesn't understand the programming portion of the pendant, there's times they can lose that zero position and it might need to be done uh, randomly, but that's because they need to reset it. Right. Another question that just came through in chat is, um, what benders are powered by 110 volts? Pretty much all of my electric benders, so you're talking 555s which is the 555 Classic or the CX. You can do 854s, 855s. I can also do my hydraulics, meaning a 880, a 777, because it uses the 975 pump, which is still a 120 volt, 20 amp system. Even the 881 will run on 120 volts. Some of those vendors will and can are, are offered in the 220 volt version too. All right. And another question that we had, um, do you have a one inch offset bender? We do not have a one inch offset bender, but we do have offset benders for half inch and three quarter inch. And those would be for EMT only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just giving, I'll see a couple more minutes if we've got a couple more questions coming in. Can you use a shotgun shoe on the 855GX? Shotgun shoe on the 855GX is not out there. The shotgun shoe is used on the 854. Um, the 855 will use its original shoe and PVC coated, but not a shotgun shoe. Oh, and also 555s. Five, five, five. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, guys, if there's any more questions out there, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, another question I did notice, and I don't know if we have addressed it 100%, but how can you stop? <laughs> Sorry about that. How uh, can you make sure you don't get wrinkles in EMT? Making sure we don't get wrinkles in EMT. Yeah, so no, we, I know you mentioned the squeeze adjustment. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to squeeze go over. adjustment is the number one. Um, I've had other contractors and users tell me they've um, been able to eliminate or help the wrinkling issue by putting the seam either up into the shoe or down into the rollers. Um, it's truly a material issue. You can try those things, but I would never encourage anybody to put grease or lube or anything onto the shoe or the conduit 
because nothing's actually moving, all the conduit is in a compression load, so the grease is not going to help you. Right, another question we just had pop up in chat. Um, where does Greenlee manufacture out of? For a lot of For our, bending. Yeah, a lot of our uh, components are in Illinois, actually. Mm -hmm. Yep, still made in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so with the, if you're using an 855GX, can that automatically figure out Springback? Springback is built right into the vendor. That's why we call it our IntelliBender. The way the vendor works is it knows the position of the shoe, rigid and IMC versus EMT. Also, there's micro switches built on the conduit indicators on the back of the vendor. So it knows what size is being put in, and what type based on the shoe position. Right now, the shoe is in an EMT location. The default is always one inch. If I put inch and a quarter in, the micro switch is activated and the intelligence that's built into the vendor then knows the spring back. When you program the pendant, you just tell the vendor the exact outcome you want, 45 degrees, and it will accommodate for spring back. All right. Um, we got a couple more questions popped up. Can you put an 854 shoe on an 855? Nope, roller boards are not there for it. All right, and um, is stainless steel bending possible? <laughs> yeah, so I mentioned before that the 881 hydraulic bender, it's actually behind me here, it can bend um, two and a half inch and three and a half, three inch stainless steel rigid. On my other vendors, we can do it. I just can't guarantee good quality bends because of the materials, but we can definitely give it a shot. All right, another question in the chat. What is your biggest bender? Our biggest bender can do um, five inch segment bending on the 884 and 885 hydraulic benders. All right. So I, I don't see <clears throat> any more questions coming in, and I believe we've answered everything I've seen fly by in chat. Um, so, anything else you guys want to add? Yeah, if you we are we will post this on our page afterwards. So if you do have more questions, feel free to comment there, and we'll respond. Uh, but other than that, thanks for tuning in, um, and let us know what you want to see next on these Q and A sessions.